Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to the home edition of Undisputed. As usual, I'm here in my humble abode in what's called the flats of West Los Angeles. I'm actually up here in in my loft where we keep our exercise equipment. You can see my treadmill is just 10 feet over there, my stationary bikes right there. Meanwhile, my partner, the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp, I believe is coming to you live from the wine cellar of his palatial estate (laughs) way up the hill from here in Bel Air. Shannon Sharp, can you hear me up there in Bel Air? Yes, I hear you just fine, Skip. Stop yelling. People are still asleep up here in Bel Air, so I need you to stop yelling before <laughs> sure you wake me up. My neighbors. You might be the only one awake so far up in Bel Air. So for the next hour, my partner Shannon Sharp and I are going to go at it over Tom Brady's I'm on to Cincinnati press conference and on whether LeBron James has actually now clinched his fifth MVP and his fourth ring. I'm afraid that's happened and on whether there's any market out there for Cam Newton at all. But now, Mm -hmm. before we get to that, let's get serious, very serious for just a moment. Last night, Carl Anthony Towns posted a video in which he said his mother is in a medically induced coma and on a ventilator. He said that he believes this is a result of the coronavirus that she actually got much better last week, and then she got much worse. And Carl Anthony said that he posted this video just to emphasize the severity of what's going on on out there right now in our world. Carl Anthony, I want you to know that I am thinking about your brother, and I am definitely thinking about your mother. Shannon Sharp, Please add your thoughts. I concur with what you just said, Skip. My thoughts and prayers go out to Carl Anthony Towns and his family also. And it just goes to show you the severity, the seriousness that this virus needs to be taken with. You know, Skip, a lot of times we keep hearing because it's, we are so polit- we are so such a political sized uh, country right now. And one side says it's a hoax. The other side says, OK, we need to take this more serious than what it is. But we need to give this the seriousness that it deserves. This is a serious, serious virus, and it's, consu- it's taking lives on a daily basis, and we need to give it that seriousness. So my thoughts and prayers go out to Carl Anthony Towns and his mom. I hope she has a very speedy recovery. Amen, my brother. Now, let's get back to what we do, which is talk sports, mm-hmm. and let's talk Tom Brady. <sighs> Yesterday, soon after Tom Brady's sort of welcome to Tampa press conference, The Boston Globe posted this headline. Tom Brady took the high road, but it's clear this was a messy divorce with the New England Patriots. Mr. Mm -hmm. Sharp, would you have been okay if Tom Brady had, had even taken a little jab or maybe even a veiled shot at Bill Belichick in the 30 minutes that he did of this press conference? Skip, I'd have been fine with it, but it would have been so off brand from Tom Brady that that's something that we would not have expected of Tom Brady. Look, we know this hurt Tom because, Skip, we can look at it one or two ways. Coach Belichick says, I believe that I can win just as many games without Tom Brady or that I can with Tom Brady or this one probably hurts worse. I would rather lose over the next couple of years than keep Tom Brady on my roster. Now, one of those two things are true. As simple as that. And it hurts. Yep, the more accomplished a person is, the more pride he or she has. It does not matter. Now, we're talking about this in the sense of sports figures, but I don't care if you're uh, an entertainer, you're an actor, you're an accomplished musician, uh, you're a doctor, you're a lawyer. The more accomplished you are, the greater pride that you have. Tom Brady, pride is hurt. Coach Belichick was only willing to go year by year for a God that was so accomplished that... These six Super Bowls, whether or not how much credit you want to give Tom Brady, he has something to do with it. And Coach Belichick says, nah, I got one year for you. Where the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, he has accomplished nothing for them. Say, Tom, we got two years guaranteed for you. We got 50 million guaranteed with another nine million in in incentives. So it hurt. 
I know it hurt Tom Brady, Skip. Trust me. I went through the very same thing Tom Brady went through, Skip. I ended up leaving uh, uh, Denver after 10 years. Hadn't accomplished nearly. You know, but I had won Super Bowls, had been an all-pro, 1,000-yard seasons. And basically, they say, you know what? I think we're better off without Shannon Sharp. We're going to go with what we have on the roster. Yeah, it hurt. And I could have took shots at them when I had my press conference in Baltimore. But you know what, Skip? Sometimes it's okay. You take the high road, you move on. And it's happened. It wasn't so funny, Skip. We played them in the wild card round the following year in the playoffs. We beat them. A reporter comes to me and asks Shannon, do you want to call the National Guard for your former team? I say, nah. I say, I got a lot of friends over there. And I know those, what those guys are going through because I've been on the side where we've lost the playoff game. So now is not the time for me to gloat and stand on my pedestal and say, see, I told you, if you had me, the outcome would have been different. So would I have had a problem with Tom Brady doing that? Absolutely not. But Skip, that would have been so, so far off brand for Tom Brady. We, it would have shocked the very conscience of, of our being. Okay, I hear everything you just said. <laughs> and I almost concur. But I want to remind everybody, Bill Belichick went out of his way to make Tom Brady's life miserable over the last two and a half football seasons in New England. Mm -hmm. I'm surprised Tom Brady took it as long as he took it. And I remain steamed that Belichick treated the GOAT that way and kept getting away with it, kept getting a pass for it, sometimes from across the debate desk on Undisputed. But the point was, mm -hmm. Tom Brady finally got steamed enough himself that if you'll remember following the 2017 season in which it ended with the Super Bowl loss 41 to 33 in Minnesota to Nick Foles and the Philadelphia Eagles. Remember, after that, Brady was upset enough with a Belichick who obviously had benched Malcolm Butler for the whole game inexplicably to this moment. Nobody knows why. It almost felt, as I used the word, sabotage that Brady mm -hmm. was out here in L.A., not too far from here, about a mile and a half, two miles from here in Santa Monica, doing a paid right. gig at a, at a conference. Jim Gray interviewed him, and Jim Gray asked him if he feels the appropriate gratitude from the New England Patriots. And Tom Brady said, I plead the fifth. I plead the fifth. Shannon Sharp, that was the only shot in all of his 20 yes. years. That was as close as he came mm -hmm. to take a shot at mm -hmm. Bill Belichick and maybe even a little bit of a shot at Robert Kraft. So mm -hmm. I was, I'm going to say hoping yesterday, maybe <laughs> half hoping. expecting that maybe Tom would take even a veiled shot back at Bill Belichick because Shannon... He deserved to. He had earned the right to take a little bit of shot. At least he could have said, well, in the end, Coach Belichick and I didn't say eye to eye because that's about as simply, nicely put as you could have put it. And I yeah. thought if he had taken even that simple little shot at Coach Belichick, that it would have been a great springboard into Tampa Bay, you know, Bucks Nation where they would have said, man, this guy's on fire to get even with Bill Belichick, and now he's ours. So I was a little disappointed that Tom didn't take the high road, just the high road. He, he took no road. He, he wouldn't even touch <laughs> any question about the Patriots to the point that he said, I, I don't want to talk about the past because it's not relevant to my future. Well, that was that, that was sort of, indicative, it was reminiscent of, remember what Belichick said after they got blown out that time that year by Kansas City, Kansas City. early in the year, and uh -huh. he said, I'm on to Cincinnati. Well, Tom's Correct. on to Tampa Bay. And he even said, when he was asked about a craft comment, he said, I'm not responsible for how other people say certain things. Well, come on, Tom, give me a little bit. You know, we know what happened. It's pretty clear. It's been widely reported right. that they just dumped all over you. And in the end, you had no real choice but to say, OK, I'm on to Cincinnati. I'm on to Tampa Bay. Right. Right. 
Right. Skip, but do you look at it when you said he should, he played the field, what he said uh, when he came out to Santa Monica and he did the interview with Jim Gray, he said he played the field. Well, people yep. plead the field against self-incrimination because here's the thing, Skip. If he lets one thing out, because it's so much, it might overflow. And then we might get an opportunity, a glimpse to see a side of Tom Brady we've never seen and we never expected to see. So I'm not surprised that he stayed Good. as buttoned up as he, as he did. But Skip, you remember he said, uh, he also said in Tampa, he's looking forward to be ha being happy. Skip, do you remember when Lane Johnson said, it seems like they're happy. just robots. Yeah. It seems like they're not having happy. Yeah. They're not being happy. <clears throat> Tom Brady and a lot of these other guys came out and said, well, winning is happiness. Winning Super Bowls is happiness. Ah, oh, Allah. I guess it wasn't as, as chummy and as rosy and as peachy as Tom Brady and those other guys would have led you to believe. Skip, look, there, nobody has ever won like this, but I believe two things can be true. You can have fun, know when to have fun. You can be serious, take your work, practice, meet, do all the things necessary that goes into winning and have these two things work simultaneously. But for whatever reason, Coach Belichick does not believe that. He's convinced mm -hmm. Tom. Tom, is, as the leader of the locker room, has turned around and convinced all the other guys the only happiness that we can have here is at the end of the day, we win the championship. And if we don't win the championship, we should be miserable. And he believed that. But guess what it got him, Skip? It got him out. After 20 years of buying into everything that Coach Belichick was selling, all the teachings that he was preaching, I bought in, and I convinced the guys in the locker room that they should buy in also. And look what it did for me. The exact same thing it did for Lawyer Malloy, Ty Law, Richard Seymour, and every other player that came through that locker room. So Tom Brady's looking at it like, hmm, but if he, it can't, Skip. He's so TB12. He's so on brand, button up, doesn't seem anything bothers him. But trust me, Skip Bayless, I've been through this. I wasn't as accomplished and didn't... Skip, I spent half as long. Think about this. I spent 10 years in Denver, and I was seething when they didn't offer me a contract. Can you imagine after 20 years and all the accomplishments that Tom Brady has accomplished, and they would do, they did this to him? He's seething. He's beyond hurt. He's beyond upset. But Skip, let me tell you what happens. It's kind of like water at a levee. If a little bit gets over and it bursts, it's going to come overflow. And Tom Brady knows if he says one thing, Skip, I don't know if he's going to be able to contain himself and it's going to go on and on and on. And that's going to be the storyline. And he doesn't want that to be the storyline. He wants he's on to a new chapter in his life. Hey, life throws his curveball something sometimes and we have to move on because he says, Skip, he's going to have to adapt. The greatest the greatest uh, uh, a reason for human and animal existence is adaptability. If you cannot adapt, you become extinct. Tom Brady says, I'm not going to True. become extinct. I'm going to adapt. Tom okay. Brady is saying, I'm going to adapt. I'm going to go to Tampa. I'm going to hear new verbiage. I'm going to learn a new system. Mm -hmm. I'm going to play with new teammates, new coaches, new fans. And I'm going to be the Tom Brady of old. And I will show you, Bill Belichick. Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to say anything, but That's I'm going to show you. Yep. You're the one person. It's not yet. Yes, Skip, I, he wants to prove that he can still play. But deep down inside, Skip, that you say put that true serum in him and say, okay, Brady, what's your motivation now? It, it's no longer the sixth round pick. It's no longer to prove that, oh, I'm going to win another Super Bowl. I want to show that 68-year-old guy that he was dead a wrong. Absolutely right. And remember, there was another line from Tom yesterday when he said, you know, for all of us, things change in our lives. And to your point, Shannon, he said, we all have to be able to e adapt and evolve. And so back mm -hmm. to your levy point, I think he's going to let his levy break on the football field next year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And I believe he chose Tampa because Tampa is the losingest franchise in all of sports. You can't go into another sport in this country and find a worse career franchise than the Tampa Bay Bucks. <laughs> I think he also happened to notice at the last second that the Bucks have the Super Bowl in their home stadium. And Tom, being a student of NFL history, knows full well that no home team has ever played in a home uh, uh, stadium Super Bowl. So again, he's saying, right. hey, what an opportunity I have to show Coach Belichick and Mr. Kraft, watch this. 
And also, yes. Shannon Sharp, I, what caught my ear during the press conference yesterday was a line from Bruce Arians, who said what, what really captivated him about Tom was not only his ability on the field, but he said, this is from Bruce Arians, his leadership ability was what we need in our locker room to go where we need to go. So Arians, mm-hmm. who's obviously mm-hmm. coached Peyton and Roethlisberger and Luck and, and Carson Palmer, he gets it that leadership at that position is just as important as performance. So he's saying we needed this guy to come in and change our whole culture. And I told you that the first thing Brady asked for was not money from the box. He said, OK, you want to give me 25 million? I'll take 25 million. He asked for the phone numbers of all of his offensive players, including his receivers. So he's already trying to contact them. I don't know if they're able, given the situation that we're all in right now, to actually play catch with each other yet. But again, he's he's actually communicating. I don't know if he's FaceTiming with them, trying to get to know the routes that they like their nuances, mm-hmm. their, their little uh, yeah. foibles and what they, how, how they like to play football. He's trying yeah. to adapt yeah. and evolve to that. And, and again, Bruce Arian said, by the way, that as soon as the season ended, they broke down tape on six or seven quarterbacks that they thought would maybe become available. And one of those was Tom Brady. Mm-hmm. And Arian said... We ranked him number one of the quarterbacks available. So, again, you're not sure about what Tom has left. I think he has a whole lot left, and I think he's going to be possessed and obsessed next year to get even with Belichick. And even though I wished he'd said it yesterday during the press conference, he's going to show it, I believe, next year on the football field. Well, in a couple of years, Skip, after he retired, probably four or five years after he retired, you'll get the TV, the TV 12 book that will come out and you'll get an opportunity to hear. He'll put it, he'll put it in, yep. in book form and you'll hear all the things of how he feels about Coach Belichick and how it transpired. Because, Skip, why give that in? Mm-hmm. You never give anything away for free if someone will pay you for it. Someone will pay to uh-huh. hear how it all transpired mm-hmm. over the last five years. I got that line from the Joker, the Heath Ledger movie. He said, you never give anything away for free uh-huh. if someone will pay you for it. I, I, <laughs> so, Skip, I, I, I actually, <laughs> yeah, I got that line from Shane Sharp. That's what you've taught me, actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, Skip, you, the thing is, is that right. when you look at it, it's going to be it's, it's gonna be a change for, 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 for Tom because he's hearing new verbiage. He has to learn body language. A lot of the communication between a quarterback and a wide receiver is body language, is repetition over and over and over again. So he's gonna have to pick up on that. You know, Skip, it, when I went to when I went to Baltimore, 50 protection in Denver was one thing. It was something entirely different in Baltimore. 70 protection in Denver mm-hmm. was I was free, you know, I was blocking. And when I came to Baltimore, 70 protection, I was free to release. So there are a lot of things that, you know, okay, you get in a situation where it's second nature, third down, late in the ball game, it's second nature, and then all of a sudden, like, mm, no, that's not what that means. So he's got a, he's got a learning curve. But Tom Brady is possessed. There's no question about that. I will tell you this, Skip. He's going to be possessed to prove. And I don't necessarily, Skip, the thing is that Tom Brady, and this is what I tell guys, look, don't get into this vendetta trying to get back at somebody. Prove yourself right. And then in the process of proving yourself right, you prove everybody that doubted you wrong. That's good enough. Okay. Okay, so one guy who has doubted Tom Brady is sitting through my camera right now named Shannon Sharp. <laughs> and I'm going to ask you I'm going to ask you again about a quote that I read in the Tampa Times this past Sunday from the great Rick Stroud who's covered the Bucks forever and ever. And he said that yes. the Bucks after they broke down Brady tape, they found no discernible deterioration in Tom's ability in the tape they watched from last year. You said that he was losing a lot of his ability. What, what, what yes. do you think the Bucs are going to get next year? How much of the great old Brady will the new team get next year? 
Well, Skip, here's the thing is, if I'm breaking someone down and I want them to come to my team, I, I'm not going to put anything negative out there. I'm going to put all positive things out there. Because remember, he's been in a situation for 20 years where he probably heard more negative than positive. And the last thing you want to do, Skip, is to add to the negativity that he's trying to get away from. So you paint the rosiest and, and, and the chummiest picture you can possibly paint. Now, Skip, for me, is that when you look at Tom, you know, Jameis made a lot of plays, Skip, moving left, moving right, stepping up and throwing the ball. That's really not Tom Brady's game. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see. Now, they still have a little cap money left. I don't know where they're going to go in the draft. Do they draft a center? Do they draft a guard? Because that's the most important thing. Maybe. Skill position-wise, Skip, they're mm -hmm. fine. But you need to shore up the middle, of the, the middle of that offensive line because that's where Tom Brady is most vulnerable. So it's going to be very interesting to see once he learns the verbiage, once he understands the body language of how the guys want the ball in and out of breaks and things of that nature, Skip, does he, is he comfortable enough? Because the one thing that Tom did have with his offensive line is that mm -hmm. trust, is that, Skip, you know who, who's vulnerable. Like, okay, this guy Von Miller's lined up over, over Cannon. I don't really like that matchup, so I'm probably going to need to slide a little left to give, you know, uh, give myself a little more time to throw this football so all those things go into it. So it's going to be very interesting to see, Skip, but this is a young man's game. Tom Brady is going to be 43 years of age at the start of the season. I'm anxious to see how will he perform, even though he has tremendous weapons now. His Skip, he's not the same guy. And if you ask all the teams to evaluate Tom Brady properly, evaluate 2019 and evaluate moving forward, not 2019 moving backwards. If you evaluate 2019 and move forward, I'm guaranteeing you, you'll get different, different views than what's being portrayed. Well, all I know is my own view. I saw no drop off. I say <laughs> Brady will be as great next year as he was the last 20 years. And to cap this oh, off, Mr. Sharp, I'm, I'm going to remind yes. you that once again, Brady signed a two-year deal with the stipulation that the Bucs cannot use the tag on him, the franchise tag, in two years. So maybe Brady thinks he still might go somewhere else in two years and keep playing elsewhere. I don't know. Maybe he thinks he'll go back and finish at New England. I have no idea. Maybe he thinks Belichick will no, get fired after two years in New England. <laughs> Skip, I think that for him, I think he's held being on getting to 45. That, I think that would be one of his crowning achievements. Well, that's what he's always said. Play. Right. And so you, when you've accomplished all that, Skip, I mean, think about it. You say, okay, here's a guy that played, so 20, 23. So you talk about a guy that's going to be played 23 yep. seasons, accomplished what he's accomplished. Right. Records that will may never, ever be broken. Now, George Blander did throw a few passes uh, at the age of got 48, it. but Skip, he was mainly a kicker at that point in time. Tom Brady position I got exclusively it. will be quarterback. No mercy. You are watching Undisputed, and we are changing gears to NBA. Shannon Sharp, when we last left our beloved pro basketball, it sure looked like it was starting to come down to Lakers or Clippers to win the next NBA championship. It, it was, what, five and a half games between those two in the Western Conference. Maybe the Bucs would be in this equation at some point, but... Let's say, for the sake of argument here, that there, there's going to be NBA playoffs because we're still not sure about that, Shannon. But if it does come down right. to Lakers or Clippers, which team benefits the most from this forced layoff that we're involved in right now? Well, Skip, sometimes you can have a blessing and a curse because I believe the Lakers, because they're an older ball club, you look at LeBron James, you look at uh, JaVale McGee, you look at Dwight Howard, some of their guys that they're going to be counting on to play, play and contribute heavily a little older, but this might be also a curse because they were starting to play really well. They had really started to figure out each other. It seems to me that Vogel had really started to uh, to find a, try to find a lineup uh, and a second unit because, Skip, this is what we know. In the regular season, you might play 9, 10, 11 guys, and then, but as the playoffs start, that rotation shrinks, and so you go from 10 to probably 8, 9 to maybe 6, 7. And so that's where they were. They were really starting to play well. LeBron had really, really, after the All-Star game, had really kicked it in. We saw it. We had started to see a different LeBron James. If you can imagine that, a guy that's leading the league in, in, in assists in year 17, giving you 25, giving you eight rebounds, but he had even started to play better than that. Western Conference Player of the Month, and again, 
uh, in February. So we had you know what we had started to see. Um, the Clippers, it helps the Clippers skip because Paul George, for whatever reason, hasn't been able to stay healthy. Pat Beverly has not been able to stay healthy. We know the chronic uh, knee problem that Kawhi Leonard uh, suffers. So it, it helps them also. But I think it might have hurt the Lakers because they had started to play better as a unit. And um, Frank Vogel had decided to say, you know what? I'm going to start, I'm gonna start playing, starting the fourth quarter with AD a little bit more as opposed to starting and sending him for seven, eight minutes and letting LeBron bring it. So uh, it's a blessing and a curse, but it didn't matter. Um, uh, unfortunately, this situation happened and we had to take a break for this uh, COVID-19. But LeBron says, I'm ready. I watch him every day getting that work in, getting up shots, working on his body, doing the band work. Yeah, yeah, training 20 hours a day, lifting cars and bells of hay. So he'll be ready when it's time to come back. Mm. So, Shannon Sharp, I regret to make this yes. announcement right here on live TV on Undisputed. <laughs> Your man, LeBron James, just won his fifth, if you can believe, MVP. And, and his fourth, I'm sorry, back in the control room, I'm getting my, I'm getting it back, my voice back in my ear here, if you guys could fix this. But, but this is driving me crazy, like my voice in my ear is. But Shannon, what happened was yes. that your man was on a hell-bent pace to win this MVP. And I believe he had just edged past, you think he had blown past Giannis for this year's MVP. And he, in so doing, he was playing high minutes for a guy who was in year 17. You were making the point, well, it's a career low minutes per game for LeBron. But the point yeah. was that he still played 209 more minutes than anybody else on the Los Angeles Lakers. That's astounding to me. And he'd still played the 15th most minutes in the whole NBA. And for a guy nearing the end of year 17, a guy who did get hurt a year ago on Christmas Day when he pulled his groin and really wasn't the same the rest of the year and they missed the playoffs, for that kind of guy, 209 more minutes than any other Laker is, is a pretty precipitous pace that you're on because you are daring the injury devil that you're going to get hurt again. So I thought it was right on time for LeBron to not only clinch his fifth MVP, which, by the way, would tie him with Michael Jordan, but, but also it puts him in even much stronger position to win his fourth ring. He's now three and six in the finals. That would be four and six in the finals and at least make him a little more credible candidate for GOAT, as you already proclaim him. But the point was with the Clippers... They just needed reps. They needed this season to go forward because they just haven't played together enough. Remember that only 10 times, well, it's now 11 because they lost that game to the Lakers, but only 11 times this year have they had their full roster intact and they would played 64 total games. And remember this, LeBron had already played 60 games and AD had played 55 games and together they had played 53 games. So they'd gotten a whole lot of reps as a duo, as a dynamic duo. What's happened with the Clippers? Right. Kawhi's down at 51 games. Paul George is way down at 42 games and they've only played 32 games together. So it's 53 together for LeBron and AD and only 32 together for the dynamic duo of the Clippers. And again, I think the Clippers are better than the Lakers, but they're not more experienced this year than the Lakers because they need to get something clicking by playing more games. And now they can't play any games and we're not sure whether they're gonna be any more games, but if they have a brief sort of prelude to playoffs and then throw everybody into an abbreviated playoffs, maybe. Maybe it'll be five-game series instead of seven-game series. Well, it's a huge, huge advantage to LeBron James. So I'm, I'm going to congratulate him because the, the team I love, the Clippers, by, by the way, remember, they just recently added Marcus Morris and Reggie Jackson. They are high-volume shooters. They are ball-dominant you know, one guy's off the bench and one guy's a new starter, but they're, they're new ball dominant cogs to this attack and they're going to shoot the basketball. Well, you got to figure out how to blend them in to the new chemistry of the Clippers. 
And I think that's going to be a big problem if we just go, boom, start the playoffs. Your thoughts? Well, Skip, Skip, you mentioned that uh, uh, it might be because the season might get abbreviated. It might be the best of five. But considering the amount of money that the NBA has lost, it might be the best of nine. They might increase the game, the playoff game, Skip, so they can get some of that revenue that they lost due to this uh, COVID-19. You you might be right. But, but Skip, when when you look at it, when you look at Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, their games are similar, so it's easier for them to blend together as opposed to AD who needs the ball. Because, see, AD is really not a guy. He can skip, but that's really not his game. Paul George can bring the ball up, get his own shot. Kawhi can bring the ball up, get his own shot. AD is really counting on LeBron to get him in the right position. He just has to get in the position that he feels most comfortable and LeBron will find him. So it was it was going to take a little more time for LeBron and AD to blend their games together as opposed to Paul George and Kawhi blending their games. But this definitely helps because it gives Paul George an opportunity to rest that hamstring. It gives uh, Kawhi an opportunity to rest those knees. It gives Pat Beverly whatever his injury was. It gives these guys an opportunity to rest a little bit. Now, clearly, yes, you want these guys to play together, Skip. But at the end of the day, look, we believe these are the two best teams in the West. The Bucs are the two best teams. And we would be shocked. I'm talking about shock beyond shock if these two, two of these uh, uh, teams are not playing for the NBA Finals. Be it Lakers, Bucks, or, or Clippers, Bucks. We're going to be surprised, very surprised, shocked if that doesn't happen. But um, but I saw that uh, uh, ESPN had a, a poll yesterday, Skip, where they had 70 media members, and it was 60-10 for, uh, for Giannis. For MVP, it was 70 nothing first place votes for uh, M- uh, for Rookie of the Year, Ja over uh, Zion. So LeBron still has some ground to make up in the media members' eyes, Skip, because Giannis got out to such a big start, such a huge lead, and he's still about 30-13, 30-14. And, but the things that made people, oh, look at his PR, well, all of a sudden he's not on a historic PR pay. Oh, they're going to win 70 games. Now, all of a sudden, they're not on pace to win 70 games. Now, all the things that was going to make him the overwhelming, the front runner, is no longer in play. The historic PER, another team that got over 70 wins. So now, the Lakers, theoretically, could catch the Bucs if they were to come back and have a full, whatever it is, 20 games, Skip. If they were to have finished this, uh, uh, the season, theoretically, the Lakers could catch them for the best record. Now, we have a different argument because Giannis is no longer on that historic pace and all of a sudden, they wouldn't have the best record in the NBA. So it'd be very, very interesting. But that ain't what GOAT plays for. We just go out there and play our best game, and we'll let the wins fall however they may. You know what we play for. We played to play in June because it was, a, it was it's been a long time since we hadn't played in June. You know, Skip, we went eight straight years. We played in June. Didn't get no vacation until July. In the, so that was upsetting yeah, for us. In in the Eastern Conference, you went eight straight. No, 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 no. Whoa, 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 whoa. You missed the playoffs. Hold on, Skip. Hold on, hold on. See, you see what you're doing? You say the Eastern Conference. But if you don't, if you don't mind, if, if, if I remember, let me see. Let me let me come back to my memory. Oh, yeah. Kawhi Leonard won the NBA Finals coming out of what conference, Skip? The Eastern Conference? I know good well. Giannis Antetokounmpo, a.k.a. the Greek Freak, is not playing in the Eastern Conference. He better be doing all this in the West. He better be doing this in the West or else I got a problem. Is he doing it in the East or the West? Yeah, Did Kawhi win the M- Uh, Wait. Wait. Kawhi won the NBA championship, which requires the Eastern Conference champion to beat the Western Conference champion. And I know he did it oh, by hook or crook. I realize Golden State got hurt. I realize all <laughs> of the above. I told you that last okay, year. Okay, we'll say that. But the point is, we'll say that. I'm going to call. I'm going to call baloney on you and all the ESPN voters because number one, LeBron is playing now <laughs> strictly for accolades, career accolades, career achievements. No, he's because not. when you're three, yes, he is. When you're three and six in the NBA Finals, you are not going to catch the obvious goat. Not, and I'm not talking about the phony goat, LeBron. The obvious goat is Michael Jeffrey Jordan. Everybody on this planet but you and a billion blind witnesses knows that for a fact. <laughs> so the point is, LeBron knows full well, because he has the highest basketball IQ, 
The only way he's even going to make an argument against Jordan is with career achievements on the scoring list, on the games played, on the assist list, blah, 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 blah. Not on the who won the most finals, because do I need to state it one last time? Jordan was 6-0 in no, the no, finals with six skip, finals skip, MVPs. Skip. No, 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 no. But you said, but you said, but you said we can't base it on the finals because there are, there are guys from the Celtics that have eight and have nine. Have, Russell has 11. So you said we can't base it on finals. You said we got to base it on scoring. We got to base it on longevity. We got to base it on all NBA, all stars, rings. Yeah, well, you got to. No. Because if you just base it on rings, no. what are we going to do with those 50s and 60s Celtics? That was prehistoric times. That that was even before I was born. That that was so long no, ago. No. You that covered Bill Russell. Russell. You covered yeah. Russell. I did not cover Bill Russell. And by the way, he's playing against a whole lot of little white guys in those days. And I'm sorry, yeah. that's just the fact. So now in modern times, it's all about Michael Jeffrey Jordan. You know it and I know it. So it's about LeBron winning his fifth MVP to catch Michael. Oh, they both have five. So now it's a level five. playing field. Baloney. It's yeah. Well, that's what's about to happen. And you know what Kevin Durant called all the people who cover LeBron. He called them fan boys and they all got swept up, led by the leader of the band, Shannon Sharp. They got swept <laughs> up in this this, this, it's a story, big story. It's the new narrative of LeBron came back. He's, he's not only the MVP, he's the comeback player of the year from his groin pull oh, year, the year before, to he was really great. And I give it up to you. I've been shocked at how good he's been this year, how great he's been this year, to the point that I believe because they beat the Clippers in the third matchup, they've lost the first two, like should have swept them. Should have swept them, bums. Oh, stop it! They should have swept them. Okay, now you know we should have swept them. Skip, back up the especially, back. skip. Especially, hold on, skip. Especially Crip. Now, now look. Them. Okay, I give you opening day. Open, opening day. I give you opening day. But you know, Christmas, we had them. We had them. Okay, thank you for bringing that up. I'll just do Christmas Day. Your team is up in a home game for you at Staples Center. You're up seven with six and a half minutes to go. And LeBron disappeared, yeah. and as usual, AD always disappears in the fourth quarter. And down the stretch, <laughs> Kawhi Leonard scored nine points in the last 630, and they pulled away, and they won the game by seven. That's, that's a nightmare for your Lakers. And need I bring up what happened on opening night when Kawhi dropped that famous or infamous now to you New Balance commercial, I'm the new king of L.A. And what happened in the fourth quarter? LeBron scored two points. It was a tie Nothing. game going to the fourth. LeBron two in the fourth quarter, AD zero in the fourth quarter. He got okay. Zonked. But what happened the last so, time? What happened the last time when Phil Handy checks LeBron the night before the game? Say, hey, hey, goat, because you know that's what everybody refers to him as. They say, goat, what you want to do? He said, I want the guy yep. with the cornrows. I want the guy that came oh, out trying it. to talk about this is a Kawhi town. LeBron said, I want him, and I'm gonna put this work in on him. And he went to work on him because right. in the fourth quarter. Gave, LeBron, gave him all he wanted and more. I gave you the stats. I don't even want to dredge them up again, but in their head-to-head -head matchups in game three, the first game the Lakers won, Kawhi got the best of LeBron again and again no, and again. But, no, but he, he no, did not have, Kawhi did not have Avery Bradley on his side, and Avery oh, Bradley no, went didn't. into the twilight zone and, and made like 15 threes that afternoon. And he made four out of six in the third quarter while LeBron was on the bench and they pulled away and won the game in the third quarter. But still, well, all that know. said, but, all right, go ahead. I did, but I didn't hear you mention any of that when Trez and Lou Williams went bonkers on Christmas. You didn't say anything about that. But all you talked about was Kawhi. And see, what happened was when LeBron was going blowing by Kawhi, and getting fouled at the bucket by Marcus Morris and Paul George, you talking about, well, that wasn't on Kawhi. Well, it should have been. But if he was in position, he would have been okay to stop it. But he wasn't. Kawhi had two blow-bys on LeBron where LeBron just looked lost. And it's okay because I'm trying oh, to be stop. nice to you today. I'm trying to tell you I've conceded nice. that LeBron has <laughs> pulled away in the MVP. And I believe he will win this year's MVP. And I believe now, unfortunately that he's going to win this year's NBA championship, however 
asterisk it is, how much abbreviation there is to this. What do you mean, I asterisk? always remind what do you. you mean? Well, there's going to be a big asterisk on the top of this. Why? That it was an abbreviated NBA season, and you lucked oh, into whoa, 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 it. Whoa. And I guess, go ahead. Let me ask you a question. Are you putting the asterisk by uh, 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 Tim Duncan? Because Tim Duncan's first title was an abbreviated season. I just want to know, are we putting an asterisk by the San Antonio Spurs? I've never tried to make the case that Tim Duncan was better than Jordan. Never, ever. Though he was great. No, no, no. He's an all-time great. He's a top 10 player, but I never said he was better than Jordan. So you got me on that one. So they both deserve an asterisk. No, they don't. No, they stop doing that. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Okay, enough of that. We've got to move on. No mercy. Welcome back to the home version of Undisputed. And if you're keeping score at home, you'll know that I'm already up two to nothing on Shannon Sharp. But who knows? This time, you might be witnessing the upset of the century. He might just win this debate. Shannon Sharp, yesterday after Cam Newton was cut by the Panthers, he posted this on Instagram. And I'm going to read the whole thing. I'm free and hungry. No pity party, just work. And then hashtag shine through the shade and hashtag not for likes, just for life. So, Mr. Sharp, what do you make yes. of this post? And then what do you make of Cam's future in the National Football League? What I think is it's going to be it's going to be a shock skip because for the first time, Cam Newton is not going to be the start in a very long time. Um, he's going to probably have to go somewhere and back up and wait for an opportunity. Um, I do believe he'll get an opportunity to skip. For me, they knew, teams knew, they were going to have to release Cam. You signed Tr- Teddy Bridgewater. You bring in P.J. Walker. You traded the other guy to Washington. I, I forget his name. You traded him. And so they knew you're not keeping Cam on the roster at $19 million. So why would I skip? Why would I trade for a guy for $19 million, have to give you draft picks, if I sit right where I am right now, I'm going to wait three days and I'll be able to negotiate with Cam Newton on my own. I can get a contract that's palatable, that's cap friendly to me, and I got to keep and I can keep my draft picks. I believe now, um, I believe Chicago's out of the running because they, they signed uh, Nick Folk. But I believe very much in play is the Chargers. They are in play. Look, you can say Cam is battered and yeah, maybe he has cauliflower and all that. I get all that. But anybody that thinks Tyrod Taylor is a better starting quarterback than Cam Newton need to be checked. Now, the rules are a little different now with the new CBA skip. You can't lose games for being high on marijuana. But you high on something else if you believe Tyrod Taylor is a better quarterback than Cam Newton. Okay. Agreed. Okay, I hear what you just said. The one thing that startled me, stopped me in my tracks, was you said that maybe Cam Newton is going to have to be a backup quarterback. Shannon. Yes. I cannot fathom, I cannot imagine Cam Newton ever being a backup for anybody in the National Football League. He's just too big. He's got too much aura, too much presence. He's got too much legacy. He was an MVP in 2015. And he, yeah. he actually, look, I, I, I'm a big fan. I, I endorsed him going number one overall. I was great with that. I, I loved what he did at, heck, I, I liked what he did a little bit at Florida before he got in trouble. And I loved what he did at Blinn Junior College. And I loved what he did at Auburn. And then for a long right. time, I loved what he did in Carolina. He was as freakish a quarterback talent as we've ever seen. And I'm including Michael Vick in there because Cam's just such a huge human being who could run like that, move like that, run over linebackers, still had a, a just a big cannon arm and touch right. and feel. He had the whole package. And when he was right in 2015, I, I'm, I'm talking about right, right, because that I, I look at that 2015 year, he had career highs across the board, 35 touchdowns to 10 interceptions. His QBR, QBR doesn't like him because he's not that efficient. So he had a 67, which was his career best that year, but it only ranked 11th in the, in the league. But then all of a sudden, he just hit the wall. And we go 16, 17, 18, then 19 last year, only played two games. But over that span, 
He was tied for first in the league in interceptions. That won't work. And then over the last four years, his QBR, again, it doesn't love him, but it ranked 31st out of 40 qualified quarterbacks. That won't work. And then nope. the injury started him. He had two, two shoulder surgeries, and then he had the Liz Frank injury in his foot that cost him the whole year last year. And he says, and his agency says, that he had an independent doctor in Atlanta check him out. He's just fine. Bill Polian, who is now in the Hall of Fame, said yesterday, well, that's all well and good, but no team's going to buy into that until they get their doctor to check him out and pass him on a physical. Absolutely. So I do, I, Absolutely. Yeah, I don't know what he is. Right. I, I'm not sure what he is physically. And so now I look at the Chargers. I agree. That seems like the best landing spot. But remember, they have the sixth overall pick. I, I don't know. Will they go Justin Herbert there? Uh, would, have they fallen in love with Jordan Love? Is he Jordan-esque? I, look, could, might they take a young quarterback because they don't have Phillip Rivers in their future anymore? They might. So would they just keep Tyrod right. as the mentor, as the, you know, maybe the part-time starter, the bridge starter to whoever, whichever quarterback they take in the draft? Maybe. Would, would they want Cam right. to be a mentor? Because he's not built like a mentor to me. He, he's he's a solo right. act. I agree. He's, he's got such a forceful presence on on social media. I just I just don't know. It's but, like Brett Favre wasn't a mentor to Aaron Rodgers. He just not built that way. He's, he's right. too much. But here's he, the thing. He's too much into Brett Favre. But here's the thing, though, Skip. Go ahead. I don't know a whole yeah. lot of places that's looking for a starting quarterback. Now, if you tell Cam, look at Cam, you can come in here and compete for the job. Okay, fine. But I don't really know a whole lot of places currently, Skip that's looking for a starting quarterback other than the Chargers. I don't either. Where else can he go? No, I, Where I don't else either. can he go and compete? Okay. Okay, look at the Dolphins. Are they going to go forward with Fitzmagic? I, I don't know, maybe, but they have the fifth pick in the draft, and now Mel Kuyper's got them penciled in for Tua. Will he fall to five? I yes. don't know, but what if he does? Okay, so what if they have Tua, and then they have their mentor in place, their bridge quarterback, and Ryan Fitzpatrick? Well, I'm not sure Cam's yeah. a great fit there. What about what about the Redskins? You just pointed out they traded for Kyle Allen to be their backup to Haskins, who who is supposed to be their future. I don't love him, but but maybe they do. And obviously, their new coach right. is Cam's old coach, and he didn't want to trade for Cam. He didn't even want to give like a fifth or sixth or seventh round pick to have Cam. So it it doesn't sound good to me. Would Jacksonville want Cam? It seems like they want to go forward with Gardner Minshew. They traded away Nick right. Foles, and I thought he was going to be their new guy. And then your team, the Broncos, you know, do they love Drew Locke? That's what Elway, Elway's singing his praises. So do you want Cam to come they in do. as his sort of plan B? I don't know. It, it, I, I don't see it. I, I don't see a home for Cam Newton because he, he's a starting quarterback. He's not a plan B quarterback. Yeah, you're a starting quarterback when you're a starting quarterback. There's a lot of people scared, but guess what? You know what? I might work in, you know, I might work in the financial ex sector. But if I get laid off and I need to pay rent and I need to yeah. pay, you know, play a mortgage and I need to send kids to school, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna find something yeah. else that's gonna help me pay these bills. So I know Cam Newton is a starting quarterback. You're a starting quarterback or you're a starting player when you're a starting player. But when you're not, you're a backup. I completely concur and and I I still admire Cam. I love Cam but it feels like he got cut too late in this process. And it feels like he's all of a sudden at the wrong place at the wrong time. And so are we, Shannon, because unfortunately we're out of time. I hate these one hour shows, but program reminder for tomorrow. We'll be on for two hours tomorrow. That's from 10 to noon Eastern time on Fox Sports One. And I'm asking you to please stay safe out there. And I'm asking you to please, please stay home. No mercy. Thanks for listening to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm Jenny Taft. Join us again at the same time tomorrow morning, 930 Eastern. We'll see you then. Fox Sports. One of one. Of one. Of one. Of one.